Hello YouTube friends. I didn't really have a mind to make a video today. Uh, it's uh, turned very cold and wet outside so there's no chance of working in the garden and uh, so today Sunday I've been um, working on this which is you may have seen it stuck on the uh, design board for a while it goes all the way back there as well it's quite it's all pinned on so I'm not going to unpin it because what I'm working on today is um oh, hello Norma come on come on sit on here so what I'm doing today is I'm sewing base units for this big piece it's going to be a bedspread for a single bed cover for Agnes when she's a bit older and maybe when she comes to stay over here with grandma um, uh, if maybe uh, her mum and dad are away and she wants to come and stay with me so we're talking about it being a few years really in reality but I'm making these uh, hexagons um, by the hundred because I want it to be a really big um, quilt single quilt but all hand stitched hexagons and they're all in these lovely blues and greens and a few sort of lovely sort of purpley ones and they're all going to sort of move like the sea <laughs> it's my idea anyway today uh, I looked at it I, I got a, a certain way along with it and I looked at it and I thought it's about um, an eighth as big as I want it to be so I need an awful lot more um, hexagons so I've got my Sizzix machine and the two dies that um, make first the paper pieces and secondly the uh, fabric pieces uh, that go together. And I use um, an old Beano annual that I got from a charity shop. I've got two or three of those and I use the pages for this because they are exactly the right thickness. Uh, for what I want to do but what I loved about them and I've just done an Instagram post about it actually because I'm really enjoying the little isolated bits of um, story let me find one like that <laughs> I'm just enjoying the little isolated bits of comic book uh, that you uh, that you get when you look there's a little dog there so it just makes sewing them on all the more fun is it a dog or is it a Yes, Doug. So I'm going to sew one on now and show you what it is I'm doing. I'll tip the camera down a little bit here so that you can see we've got the ever-present Norma, always Norma. Um, only when I'm talking to you guys, she was fast asleep. Let's see if we can do it above Norma here. And I need a nice big knot in the end and I use just cheap uh, cotton in a, a colour that I'll be able to see when I'm taking the threads out again so you can see in that one there that the pink's easy to see when I want to take the threads out which I'll do at the very end of this piece okay so let's just get one of these things then excuse me no and one of the pieces I've done this with you before on the channel but I'll do it again uh, now so that you can see what I'm doing so there's my little hexagon uh, from the Beano book there I'm going to place it centrally. So the best thing about the Sizzix machine is that these are hexagons that are an inch. This is how they measure the size of it uh, by the by the size of one side. Now you go down that way, please. Thank you. Go. That's it. So one side of the hexagon there, that's an inch. So that's an inch hexagon. And so I'm guessing then these are two inch. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll just move the camera around so that you can see what I'm doing. Norma's gone now, so that's uh, interesting. OK, so it's, I've done this before. I'll do it again. So you fold over that edge there like that. And there's a knot in the end of my thread. And I'm just going to put, let's see if we can get that a little bit better for you. And she's gone in round in a circle. She's come back the other way now. <laughs> You stay there. Oh, she says, I'm not going to stay there. I want to say hello to you. OK, then. So we fold that first edge over and and just do one. I've chosen pink and I've chosen the purple one. You won't be able to see this at all. Never mind. Then you <laughs> fold that end there and put a... Now, can you see? I need you to be able to see this. There we go. There. 
So I put my needle through all three layers. Fancy me doing pink with a purple piece of fabric and then back again. And then while I'm doing this, because this is why I need the paper to be nice and firm. Not too hard like cardboard. But this is just perfect. And I'm sort of feeding it on with my thumb and finger. And then another stitch through the corner there. You just keep doing that, going round, making sure that you're keeping everything nice and tightly onto the piece of paper. And round it goes. And then when you get to the last one, when there are two corners like that, I press them both down with my thumbs like so, fold it over and then just give one stitch across the last edge and then another stitch just to secure it. And there it is. I mean, it's purple, so you can just about see the pink stitches, I think. That's what I've been doing this afternoon while it's been rainy and not very nice. Uh, I've just been uh, cutting fabric and stitching hexagons. And then what I do is I pin it up onto the design board, which is occupied at the moment with the Patreon quilt along that's going on at the moment. I'll be filming some of that for Tuesday. Uh, it's, I'm going to show all the different shapes that you can put it in. Um, so you see that one? That hasn't that didn't work very well. It's not right on the edge, so I won't use that one because you need them to be accurate. But that one's nice and accurate. And the Sizzix machine cuts them absolutely beautifully. So I'm just going to pick up another bit of uh, fabric. Blue this time. So these are all, as I say, they're all my little scraps and bits and pieces of blues. Uh, greens and a few purples. So I will show you what it looks like at the end. So I've just had a this kind of a day where I uh, I haven't been outside much. I've been out to see to the hens and and um, you know water in the greenhouse polytunnel because the um, the garden's been beautifully watered. It's watered, absolutely brilliantly watered, but the polytunnel still needs it. So all the tomatoes and the things that are coming up in there. The, parsley and the cucumber they all need watering but no it's uh it's brilliant uh to have this wet so now then let me show you what i do now so i've got this small board which is just a piece of insulation you know building site insulation and it's all laid out like so this box here is one of my fabric boxes and this has got all my bits and pieces in, uh, you know, when I'm not using um, the thimble and the scissors, they go in there. And then uh, I get a goodly handful of the ones that I've made and put them up on the board. Just all the ones that I've just pieced together like that. What I do now is I just put the pieces on with a piece of um I put the pieces on with pins. Um have I got enough pins? Let's get some more pins. Pins, there we are. And then I just have a load of fun. <laughs> Placing these on the, um, there's a few too many there for me to see what I'm doing. So if you can see, I wonder if you can see, it's nice to work on this small board because I can put a, a few pieces in and then stitch them on and then a few more. It means it's quite portable, especially when the other board's in use. Okay then, so, so there's greens coming through here and then quite a lot of blues coming through there and blues coming through here, but loads of lovely lilacs coming through here as well. So that would be on that side there. So let's carry on with these blues here. Um, I try, my only rule is that, uh, that I don't have two the same together. And also the transitions, if I can make the transitions 
um, sort of a, a bit natural. And that's why it's nice to have a, such a lot of pieces to go at. So I'm just going to um, play with this a bit. And here I would need something that went from blue to, to this green. Now the, that green's only pegged in there so I can take it out. But we'll pop it in there for now and we'll see if we can find something. You see that's too stark. That won't work. But we'll see if we can find something that will um, blend uh, away. There's, oh, there's a purpley one and we've got purpley going on here. So let's, ah, that's better. So put that in there, I think. So this is the fun part, the designing. I love this, but then I love the sewing together as well. I really enjoy that. Uh, in fact, I enjoy every stage of hand quilting, every bit of it. And this hasn't got, uh, I don't have to make it in a hurry for anything. Um, you know, years before we're going to need this. So that's the kind of project that you can just pick up and down. And I like that a lot. Is that okay there? Let's pop it there for now and see what happens. See, this one's very pale. This one will make, uh, make its way into a much paler area like this. Yeah, so I've just been having a very quiet day today um, uh, and yesterday. I haven't seen anyone. Went shopping a little bit of shopping yesterday and that was nice. Uh, but um, yeah, it's just quiet days, you know. So I thought today, there's nothing, I'm not doing anything, nothing much to make a video about. And then I put that picture on Instagram. See what I did there? Put the two identical ones next to each other. <laughs> put that picture up on Insta and I thought, oh, well, maybe this is interesting. Maybe people would like to see what I'm doing here and have a bit of a chat. What do you think? <laughs> I really enjoy doing this. Put it up down a little bit more so that you can see I'm working on this area here, trying to fill all of this up here. And those two are the same, so I wouldn't put that one anywhere near it. Let's get rid of that for now. But I've got loads more of these underneath the board. That's a nice one. It's got quite a bit of purple in it. So that would go when this one, that would go there probably. But I'm not coming off the board just yet. OK, then let's see. Let's get some of these blues in here. It's a very nice way to work. So if you are uh, working on something like this, in order to keep the layout so that it doesn't all fall to bits when you're not working on it. This is just a piece of, um, I think it's called Kingspan in the, in the UK. I don't know what it's called elsewhere, but it's a little piece of this stuff called Kingspan, uh, which your needles, your pins fit into very, very well. Now, when I've, I'll, I'll probably lay this out all the way to the very edge of here. And when I've done that, I take a photograph of it because then uh, when I take a few off to sew them, I'll know where they go back together again. So that's always another good device is um, to use your camera like that. Yeah, so I've just been watching a bit of TV on the computer here and... Um, Messing around with this, it's been good. I need to bring this back to being green again uh, somehow. I'm just hoping I've got enough green so that one's there. So it could go there again, couldn't it? Yeah. Take this back out pale again, so that bit of dark comes out to the lighter coloured blues now. And it's always interesting where the transitions between the blues and the greens happen. That works there, but they don't work there. That's good there. Thank you. 